Hello guys, this is Michael from Salt Lake City. I'm going to do a first look at a unit here today that uh, someone brought to me about a week ago and I'm just now getting around to looking at it. This is, many of you have seen these, they're, they're, they're around, there are a couple variations of these and they're all really nice machines. This is an Admiral radio, AM radio, broadcast band radio and record player. And of course, this thing I think was probably made around 1948, 49, which would mean that this would be a 78 only player, which it is. This machine only plays 78s. It will likely have a crystal cartridge. I don't know when they started using ceramic, but we shall find out. And uh, sure looks like a crystal cartridge to me. It might be in a plastic housing, but it looks like a crystal cartridge. We'll find out about that. I'll look at the number once I get to that. Here's the record size change device. And it's pretty sticky, so I'm not going to push it. And there is, uh, you know, the, the, there's always some sort of a scutcheon around the pivot on these old machines. So there's that, that part there. Sometimes you can tell if the uh, changer mechanism is going to work when you spin. And there you go. When you turn the platter. So changer mechanism seems to be engaging. By the way it's moving, I suspect that it is a cable control. But don't know that for sure. It's moving kind of slow. But then again, a 78 moves rather quickly when it's turning. Okay, there you go. Okay, so it does appear to be working somewhat. And you never need to worry when you set these down like this on some of these old 78 players because they don't ever actually touch the floor of the machine. It's a, it's a fairly light tone arm. It is plastic, so I'll need to be real gentle with it when I'm looking at it. But it will polish up nicely. These are in a, I, I believe this is Bakelite, a Bakelite cabinet. Sure looks like Bakelite. There's the Admiral logo, and you can see from the marbling, that's very much like a Bakelite. Admiral made really um, pretty cool record players, so I'll get to know this one if she decides to do the work. Right now we're doing a first look. I'm going to give her an estimate on the work. Admiral also had pretty nice radios. I've got some TV sets with a similar sort of radio dial made about the same time. This one is missing a knob. Here's what the tuning knob looks like, and that's what the knob that's missing should look like right there. Sort of a marbled mahogany red color. Okay, here's the back side. You can see the back light. There's a nice vent hole or vent slot. Bent slot for below the, the uh, turntable um, um, base plate. I don't see any cracks in the bake light anywhere. It all looks to be pretty solid and in pretty good shape. It shall polish up nicely. It's harder to polish Bakelite than it is to polish plastic because Bakelite has sort of a surface skin on it. And if you break through that skin, then you'll never get it to shine again. And it also, that it doesn't shine as brightly as plastic does. It's uh, it's part of the way it molds that makes it shine, but the material itself doesn't polish the same as plastic. So there's the back of it. I'll take a real quick look underneath. Okay, I have the unit supported on some, some soft cloth, so nothing's going to happen to it. And here's the model right here. You can see it is a model 6F for Frank, 11-N for Nancy. There's a little close-up of that uh, sticker. Of course, I'll take my uh, handheld scanner to that sticker and I'll make a duplicate of it, or, you know, I'll scan it and make a duplicate file of it. And hopefully I'll be able to make those stickers. Looks like an inspection sticker. Okay, maybe it looks like uh, there's a chassis number there. In any event, here's the record, record changer. Admiral did their own thing. Admiral record changers were... Significantly different than RCA or other brands, Voice of Music, uh, Chicago, Webster Chicago. The Admiral made their own, just like Philco did. They used high quality motors and high quality materials when they made those. And so I, you know, this, I suspect this will be a really nice machine. It looks like that fan blade is not on there real tight. Maybe it's not supposed to be. But I suspect that it is. Why would it, if it's just going to slip, that's not going to do anybody any good. So, 
Well, it turns easier in one direction than the other, so perhaps that's part of it. I don't see a lot going on with suspension for it. Maybe that's uh, been kind of eaten away and broken away. Usually there's some rubber grommets, but maybe I just can't see them. I do see some old, what looks like old dried up lubricant. That's going to have to all be cleaned out of there. You can kind of see it. This will all be rather stiff. And I don't see, let's see, where is the tone arm lift? So let me find that here. Kind of hard to see, but I don't see any cables or anything like that. So perhaps it's all linkage operated. Of course, I, I, I don't know this particular vintage well, even though I have a couple. I haven't worked on them, so we'll take a look at it. So it's a basic record changer, and it's a 6-2 uh, chassis. Well, there you go. It seems like a real simple chassis, probably pretty cramped, cramped inside. Uh, maybe not too bad. It's a little deeper than, than most that I see like this. But uh, it's probably pretty tight in there. But all in all, it looks to be in decent condition. It's going to need to be restored. It all looks like it's original. You know, there's the cosmetically that'll be easy. Electronically, it'll just be a matter of recapping, I'm sure. Uh, replacing any out of tolerance resistors, checking all the tubes, make sure they're right. Check the speaker, make sure it's working right and there's no problems there. And then, of course, mechanically, I'm going to have to go through all of that. That's going to be the most difficult part of the job is all of this stuff in here. So I will, uh, I will have to take it apart to check all that out. So that's going to be once they decide they want to do it because there's no point in me taking that all apart for now until, until I know they want the job done. I am going to lift the platter and get a look at the idler wheel or wheels. And who knows, maybe it's a turret drive. We'll take a look at it. Um, so I'll pause it again and we'll go back to the top side and lift the platter up. The speaker, the speaker cloth is in good condition. It would not need to be replaced. In fact, I don't even think it needs to be removed at all. I would just leave it as it is and clean up the escutcheon around it. I have the uh, lid lifted up. This lid is easy to operate. To, to close it, one just pulls this little catch right there, and kind of like an old gramophone lid. You lift it and it catches. So that works out pretty easily. I'm going to lift the platter up. There was no keeper or any kind of a C-clip on this, so let me just go ahead and do that. Pretty straightforward, these old ones. See, Admiral did something different in the way this was designed. I've seen this before. Buzz did a video, I believe, that involved an Admiral record player, and it looked uh, it looked just like this here. So we'll we'll set this aside for now. So all right. So what we have here, we have a motor that has basically it looks like it has sort of fallen down, like one of the motor mounts. This may become loose, hard to tell for sure. Yeah, looks like it should have been mounted right there. There's a mounting hole here that looks like it had a screw from the marks around the hole. And uh, I, what it looks to me like it has come apart. So that's one issue that would have to be tended to. I do see inside of there what looks like a hardened rubber motor mount or grommet. Yeah, sure enough. It's it's not it's not super hard. I can feel a little bit of cushiness to it, but it's pretty hard. Um, this is an odd setup. I'm not familiar with this setup. So it looks like these motor mounts are held in with these little funky clips. I'll have to get a close up of those clips later, but um, that's kind of weird. And uh, I'm not familiar with this either. So I've done admirals before, but not this particular style. So this looks almost like cork here, top of the bearing. So that's like a friction surface so that it can sit rest on the bearing. Maybe it's an isolator. So I, I've, I have cork board material, so I can make a new, uh, I could make a new cushion there. This looks to me like a changer cam. And it, it was once soft rubber, so there will be no getting a replacement for this guy. This will have to be uh, revulcanized with new rubber. Gary at Voice of Music Audio Enthusiast does that kind of work, and so I send anything that needs to be revulcanized with new rubber off to Gary, and he takes really good care of me. I've never 
had one that I'm unhappy with. They've all been great. So I can see immediately that it's going to need some things. Sidler wheel will have to be replaced or re-rubbered, depending. It, it, it's got some softness to it, but I guarantee you that a little bit of operation will glaze this thing over and it won't work. This cam, um, this changer cam right here, it's got a rubber cam surface on it. That's kind of that's one of the funkiest ones I've ever seen. I bet you inside is where the real rubber is. This is just a skin of rubber when they vulcanized it. And I bet you there's a pivot that rides inside of a cam slot inside that thing. In any event, that will have to be re-rubbered. I've done that before. There's some RCAs I've done that use a similar situation. Only this is located under the uh, base plate on the RCAs. So I'll have to do that. So we got the idler wheel. We've got this cam and mount grommets. It there's going to be all three mount grommets. I'll probably have to figure out a different scheme for mounting. I don't trust these clips. They look like they were probably fine at one time. Maybe these two are fine, but I'm missing one. So at the very least, I'll have to put a, you know, like a, uh, a machine screw and a nut there. So those grommets. Also, I'm going to be looking at a cartridge for it. It'll be a crystal cartridge replacement kit, I'm sure. Again, Gary at Voice of Music Audio Enthusiast will take good care of me. He has some nice kits that work out great. Um, did lots of cleaning, lots of adjusting, lots of dismantling to do those things, and lots of reassembly. So the majority of the cost in this is going to be in the record player. And that's usually the case when you have combo units like this. The radio... It's very standard, you know, I have a standard fee I charge, I do it by the number of tubes. And then of course I'll have to replace this knob that's missing, it's not in the frame of the camera, but there's a knob missing. The rest of it is a lot of cleanup. I can make this look real pretty, this will be a nice looking machine. And I can make this interior look real pretty too. It's going to be these record player components that are going to be the bulk of the cost. So, you know, this is, uh, is definitely savable. It's going to be a matter of whether or not uh, folks like to spend the money on it, you know, because it's only going to be able to play 78s. It, it's not, you know, you don't want to convert something like this to a multi-speed changer. Not only will it uh, not be original, it'll look odd and it's likely not to fit well, so there'll be a lot of hack job going on. So this needs to be kept exactly the way it was made. And the person needs to learn to enjoy 78s. I happen to enjoy them, and I have about 4,000 of them. And I listen to them every now and then. And I brought one out in case this does run, but I can see that's almost going to be a lost cause here. This motor is not going to run. So I, I will test the motor, but it is not going to drive a record. But I will test the, the cartridge for an output by touching on it, tapping on it, that kind of thing. Okay, so let me, uh, let me get her set up to be turned on on the Variac, and I'll put some voltage to it slowly on the Variac. We'll see what happens. Normally, I would let you watch what I'm doing with uh, with the Variac because uh, then you can see the voltage for yourself. But this time, I'm going to have to um, just get by without that because um, the, where it's sitting is the best place for it. I've got the Scott 800B in the location in front of the Variac, and I really don't want to move all that around right now. But uh, so I'll go ahead and set it to first. I'm going to set it to radio. So this down here is the band switch, and the outer knob is the tuning. So you kind of see what's going on there, and you can see the tuning dial indicator moving. So I'll go ahead and, it's on radio. It is turned all the way up. See, on these, it's phono, the phono is the same position that turns it off if you don't have the phonograph going, I believe. Maybe the tone control is the on-off. Let me check that. I moved that knob over. Let me just check it. Yep, it is. So it's on. Tone's about midway. I'm going to turn the volume all the way up. Okay, volume is all the way up. I'm going to I'm going to kick on the Variac. Make sure the Variac sitting at a low voltage. Okay, got it plugged in. Variac is on. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to be watching current guys, so you won't see me. I'm just going to be looking at the radio. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to put it up to 60 volts right now. If that's 60 volts, the ammeter has not really moved. I'm going to let it sit there at 60 volts for about a minute. This plastic, see now, this 
is Bakelite, but this is plastic, and this uh, this tone arm will clean up nicely. My biggest challenge with the tone arm is going to be to avoid removing any of that nice painted those nice painted letters in the Admiral logo there. But they're recessed, so it shouldn't be too bad if I'm just gentle about it. Of course, all of this too, I forgot to mention, all this will have to come apart because this is going to be really stiff and sticky. I've had these just frozen before. Alright, we're going to bump it up to 90 volts now. We should start, if there's going to be radio, it'll start coming in about 90 volts, maybe a little higher. Current is not really moving much. So far I got nothing, guys. Hmm. Well, I got nothing. Rectifier's not lit. I have nothing going on. Let me just check this out and see. The chassis just lifts, tilts right out. Now, this is a, uh, it's like an All-American 5. It's got six tubes, but it's a transformerless arrangement, so I need to be careful how I handle it because I don't need to be getting shocked. I am running through an isolation transformer, so I should be okay there. Let's check it out. The current, it's funny, the current does go up just a tiny bit when I turn, when I turn the voltage up, but I'm not seeing enough change for it to... Yeah, I don't think that the tubes are lighting up. And of course, if one of them is bad, they'll all be bad because of the string, the series string. I'm looking at the uh, 50L6, and I'm not seeing any lighting at all, and that should be lit, lit as, bright as, it, as brightly as anything, and that would heat up rather quickly as well. Alright, we'll check it out. I'll pause it for now. I am going to test some tubes on this. I, I suspect that since I got nothing happening, I have no tubes lighting up, that I have a, a tube that's bad in the string, you know, bad filament, so I'm not getting any lighting on any of them. But one thing before I start to do that, I want to point something out here. I'm looking at this tuning condenser right here, and you see the plates? See the plates there? Looks like it's been broken or something. I'm not sure what I would do about that. Um, I'll have to look at that. It's loose. I've never seen that before. I'm not sure if it's common or not. It's not something I've ever seen. So perhaps that's possible to fix in place with a little epoxy. It's good that it's on that outside one. That's the adjustable one of the adjustable plates. And uh, so I might try a very small amount of epoxy to fix it in place. And then I'll use the adjustable feature of the plates to to take out to compensate for anything that I mess up in, in that process. I noticed it when I was trying to tune the, the thing, you know, turn the tuning knob. Um, it tuned until one of the plates grabbed. You can see it coming up right there, grabbed, and it stopped. You see, it didn't want to turn anymore. So, um, that's another challenge with the radio. That will prevent the radio from operating until that's working. But, uh, okay, let me test the tubes. Uh, my, my point here is to, to, to let her know all the things that are wrong. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, what I found out so far is that I have a bad power switch. I tested all the tubes. That's the first thing I did. I should have tested the power switch first. That's a more common failure. I tested all the tubes. All the tubes tested really well except for the 12SA7, which tested a little bit weak. Not weak enough to kill a radio, so I know that's not the problem. Besides, it had filament, so I've replaced the or I bypassed the power switch, put all the tubes back in. It did have some badly bent condenser um, tuning condenser plates. I've straightened those out. You know, if I were to do this radio, I'd pull the tuning condenser and I would check them and make them uh, straight the best I could. Um, I think I could make that thing work. I had talked, you know, earlier about maybe using some epoxy to fix that plate, but I think that it had just come, um, basically just come loose from people trying to tune it and, it and that plate catching. I think I can fix it just without anything, just pushing it back into its hole and it should be fine, back into its slot in the tuning condenser shaft. But in any event, I haven't powered it up yet. If I got the, the uh, power switch bypassed, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to operate the Variac and it is set to radio. 
variac is on. Immediately I can see the difference. Current is climbing as I turn up the voltage. 45 volts. I'm at about, oh, about a, I don't know, fifth of an amp. 60 volts. I'm up about a quarter of an amp. Let's go up to about 70 volts. So far no problems with the current. That's strange. The uh, record player motor is turning, so it's supposed to be set to radio. Okay, so at 70 volts I have sound. Let me see about turning off this record player. Hmm. Oh, you know what? When I bypass the switch, I put power to the record player as well. Okay, I'll live with that for now. All right, so we're at about 70 volts. I have some sound. Let me see if I got any, if I have anything worth listening to. Now the, the dial cord is pretty loose. A lot of hum. Let me turn off my uh, LEDs. Oh, I, I hear the I hear a hint of a station there. Yeah, very distorted, but there's a station wanting to come in there. Yeah. I'm only at 70 volts. Yeah, there we go. That's AM 1370, KSOP, my favorite country station. Let me turn up the, vol the uh, voltage a bit. So I'm drawing about a quarter amp at 70 volts. 80 volts, current hasn't changed much, tiny bit. 90 volts, current has gone up to about, oh, about uh, 24 amps. 100 volts and still less than half an amp. 110 volts, and we just a shade under a half an amp. That's as far as I want to go. So what I have established, I'm going to turn that down. Well, first I want to try something. Since I have the record player, let me put it on record player. Let me try this. Very small output from the cartridge. That would want, we'd want to replace that. I got the volume all the way up and I have very low output. Um, however, that tells me that the preamp, everything, all that's working. I just have low output from the cartridge. Let me turn it down. I've, I've powered it long enough with uh, those old filter capacitors. So, what have I established? I've established that the, uh, the radio is fundamentally sound, that, it, that it, I'm getting IF. The transformer, not transformer, the, the uh, uh, power supply circuit is good. All the tubes are good, of course. Um, everything is doing what it's supposed to do, but what I have are a lot of bad capacitors, I'm sure. Coupling capacitors, bypass capacitors, all, this, all that stuff's all messed up because they're old. Uh, power supply capacitors, the electrolytics are old and they're shot. So what this radio basically needs is... is a, a complete uh, electronics restoration so it needs all the capacitors replaced it'll need probably a good half of the resistors if not more replaced they'll be tested if I test a bunch of them and they all test bad in the first bunch I test and I'll stop testing I'll just replace all of them because resistors are not expensive speaker is good speaker voice coil is good the output transformer is good um, let me see the IF cans are both good. The motor for the turntable record changer is good. The uh, preamp and everything for the record player is good. All that stuff is good. I have output from the cartridge, although it's low. So I talked about needing to replace the cartridge earlier anyway, so that doesn't surprise me. All I, I mean, I'm surprised I had anything out of it, but it is really low. 
So um, this is going to be your basic radio record player overhaul without uh, a lot of uh, quirky things. I think it's going to be okay. It'll need a knob. I'll throw that into it as well, and I'll need to figure out how to tighten this fan on there. That was kind of curious. It's so loose, but, you know, it was still spinning. So um, I think, uh, I think um, we pretty much have the size of it. This is definitely a restorable record player. If someone is interested in playing 78s, this is definitely one that they would, they would want to go ahead and, and uh, do the work to. I love 78s, and I really like these Admiral record players, so if it were me, I'd do it. But, you know, I'm going to present it to them and see what they say. So that's the end of this first look on this, uh, this uh, roughly 1948-49 Admiral record player. Here's a real quick look under the chassis. It's your typical radio chassis. There's a big electrolytic. Looks like that was changed at some time in the past. Um, I have clipped the bypass capacitor right there. Those things have a way of going boom when you're testing a radio. So I clipped that. That doesn't affect radio performance at all. It doesn't affect anything. There are some newish carbon capa carbon resistors in there and there's uh, basically no other new parts it all looks pretty vintage so it's real standard by the way let's see here there it is there there's the uh, the tone control and power switch so that's the part that will need to be replaced that's a tone control um, potentiometer and power switch so I'll look into that so I think I'm uh, that's all it's going to take so there is, is the underside like I said speaker looks good um, all the pieces are there for the tuning it's just that the speaker cord is a little bit loose the flocking on the uh, the dial backing looks pretty good the uh, needle pointer looks pretty good so really it's your basic restore the loop antenna looks to be in excellent condition, so that won't be any issue. A lot of times with these uh, built-in loop antennas, um, they get pretty warped and beat up and rough. And uh, on a lot of General Electrics, General Electrics and RCAs, they actually begin to come unwound. So uh, this one's in really nice shape. Well, this project's out there a bit, but it will be fun once we get going on it. Like I said, I have a couple of these, and I might do one of mine in tandem with this guy. These are great record players. Admiral made really good stuff, and they're a lot of fun. I like 78s, so it'll be fun to bring this thing back to life. All right, guys, this is Michael from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City. That's all for now.